Hello, my name is A.E. Reichart, or Ali as I'm known, and I write MM Romance and Gay Fiction. I want to talk to you about this, and it's my latest book, Loose Connection. It's actually my second book, but it's the first in the Urban Love series. It's currently available on Amazon as an e-book and will soon be available as a, as a print book. And it'll also be going up on the other electronic um, retailers such as Nook and Kobo. Um, so, yeah, it's available for purchase now and now is November 2015. What I want to do is to read you an excerpt. And the piece I'm going to read is the second meeting between the two main characters, Rick and Matt. Um, Rick has had rather too much to drink in, in this excerpt. Anyway, here we go. Rick winced and sucked air through his teeth as he slammed the shot glass down on the bar. The spirit burned the back of his throat and his eyes watered. He'd lost count of how much he'd had to drink. Hours before, there had been champagne at Zach and Archie's and later, at dinner, there had been white wine, red wine, dessert wine, brandy and now, in the crowded, hot, stuffy, noisy bar, it was shots. Rick folded his arms on the sticky bar top and slumped forward. He didn't care that beer was spilt on him or that he was being shoved and knocked by the other drinkers, waving hands for the barman's attention. He just wanted to drift into sleep and hoped that his gurgling stomach calmed down. A strong pair of arms dragged him off the bar stool and steadied him on his feet. Firm hands held him still whilst his head spun. Archie, what are you doing? I was trying to sleep, Rick said. His mouth felt heavy and fat, the words slurred and indistinct even to his own ears. Fucking lightweight. Zack stood behind Archie, his head tucked into the crook of the other's neck and shoulder and his arms draped around his waist. Don't be cruel, Archie said as he tugged Zack's arms in tighter around him. You know he can't take his drink. Don't talk about me as if I weren't here. It's very, it's very, it was very what? Rick couldn't remember. He started to sway and felt a meaty hand grab his arm. His head span and the noise of the bar was making his ears bleed. All he wanted was to lay down in the quiet and stay very, very still. Wanna go home, Rick muttered. We're going on to that club in Vauxhall, Zack said as he peered at Rick. This one's not going anywhere, not in this state. I'll go outside with him and get a cab, Archie said as he disentangled himself from Zack. Come on, let's. Hey, Archie, Zack, I've not seen you guys in ages. Come here. The loud voice, booming above the music and noise of the crowd, turned Archie and Zack's attention from Rick towards a tower of muscle that stood at least a head taller than anybody else in the bar. The three of them fell into an embrace and Rick could hear them all talking at once as he was forgotten. Cab, yeah, home, now, Rick thought as he stumbled his way through the press of bodies, leaving his friends to their loving with the muscle. The freezing night air smacked him in the face, making him gasp in his head spin. Instantly, Rick felt his mouth fill with sticky saliva and the rising nausea burned his throat as he bent double. The long, drink-soaked night spewed out of him, steaming on the pavement in the frosty air. Through the ringing in his ears, Rick heard a mix of derisive laughter and exclamations of disgust. If he closed his eyes, he could ignore them. He dragged the back of his hand across his wet lips, the sour taste and stink of vomit sharp in his mouth and nose. He felt better. Not great, not good, but better. Maybe he could get home in one piece after all. On shaky legs he started to straighten, but the second bout of sickness jackknifed his body as he emptied himself once again onto the pavement. Hunched over, the hand that settled on his back was warm and steadying as Rick spat in an attempt to clear his mouth. There was no more left in him to expel. A bottle of water appeared in front of him. Rick grabbed it as he carefully stood up straight before drinking deeply. Thanks, Archie. Just help me get a cab and I'll be on my way. I'm in no state for a... You're right, you're not in any state. Rick spun round, the sudden movement making him stumble. The hand that had felt good and calming on his back deftly caught his arm and anchored him to the spot. Steady. You don't want to have a fall, not on top of everything else. Green eyes. Even in the yellow glow of the street lamp, there was no mistaking the vibrant colour of the eyes that looked at him with concern. Those eyes had melted Rick the first time he'd seen them and they were doing it again. The street lights reflected off the man's dark hair, making it look thick and glossy. It had a blue sheen, 
which even through Rick's alcohol fog black brain made him think of the dark feathers of a magpie. The man whose strong hand held Rick steady wasn't Archie. You're the... you're... For a moment, Rick couldn't think. He felt disorientated, but looking at the man in front of him, he didn't think it was just from the alcohol. The plumber. You're the plumber, Rick blurted out. Matt. Rick tried to still the wavy sensation in his head. He remembered the unashamed lust that had overtaken him when he'd opened the door on Matt Connell less than a week before. He didn't think that he'd been the only one trying to hide a stiff dick. He wouldn't mind a stiff dick now, one that he could press up against his knight in shiny armour, but his drink-soaked body wasn't having any of it. The way he was feeling at the moment, Rick didn't think he'd ever be able to get it up again. Matt's expression softened as he smiled, and Rick melted just a little bit more. Yes, and this is the second fix I've got you out of in, what, five days? Yes, sorry, thanks. It's all a bit of a mess, Rick said, as he looked down at the now frozen vomit, thinking that it looked like somebody had spattered a cheap pizza all over the pavement. I saw you come out and thought you could do with a hand. I was with my friends, then I don't think much of your friends. They should have been looking after you. They were helping me. I gave them the slip. Really? As soon as they got into the group snog, they forgot all about you. Were you watching me? Yes. Matt had been watching him. The bar they stood outside of was well known, popular with the pre-club crowd. Not that Matt was going clubbing. He had almost dropped his pint when he'd seen Rick walk in with two men. One broad and well muscled with bleach blonde spiky hair. The other thin and wiry with a head full of unruly curls. Rick had been followed by a tall man who had been scrolling through his phone. The man had leaned in close and whispered something to Rick at the same time as he wrapped his arms around him and gave him a tight hug. Jealousy and possessiveness had sent a shockwave through Matt's body. It should be his arms encircling Rick's waist, not the tall guys, who Matt had wanted to shove out of the way and tell to fuck off. With a trembling hand, Matt had raised his pint to his lips and taken a long draught of the overpriced imported lager before placing it back on the bar top and running his hand through his hair. The scorching heat of his reaction, as he'd watched Rick with the other man, had unnerved him. Taking a deep breath, he had told himself to get a grip. In a sea of men who were out to catch and be caught, Rick stood out. His clothes were eye-bleeding bright, but they couldn't disguise the heady mix of wide-eyed innocence and overt sexuality that flowed from every dip and bend as he pushed his way through the crowd. Matt had spent the rest of the evening watching Rick get more and more smashed, ur urged on by his friends. He'd also been sporting a semi that had nothing to do with this sort of date, to whom he had long ago stopped listening. The man had got fed up and called Matt a tosser as he slid off the bar stool and slipped in and disappeared into the crowd. Barely registering that he'd gone, Matt had ordered another beer and continued to watch Rick. When two of the three men Rick was with had turned all their attention to a tall, muscular man, Rick had pushed his way through the crowd towards the exit. Matt had abandoned his drink and followed him out. So there you go. That's a little excerpt. I hope that's whetted your appetite. Um, as I say, Loose Connection on Amazon as an e-book, soon to become a print book, and soon after that to go on to the other retailers. Anyway, why don't you look me up on Twitter, where I am A.E. Reichart at A Right To Do. I'm on Facebook and my website is aereichart.com. Thanks very much. Bye now.